Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amanda Shi. I'm an anesthesiologist and an intensivist. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about my journey to anesthesiology. When I was growing up, I always knew I wanted to do something in medicine, but I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't have any family members or anyone else that was in the field of medicine. I just had this feeling that it was going to be a good fit for me. When I was in grade school and eventually when I got to college, I kind of went down exploring a couple different paths to make sure that medicine was indeed the right career path for me. And I actually have an engineering degree. Um, I worked as an engineer for a short period of time and definitely felt like that was the wrong fit. And also realized that a desk job would never be a good fit for me. Uh, I briefly considered, oh, would I enjoy things in like law or other kinds of like social sciences and things like that. And a lot of those career paths just didn't align with what I saw myself doing for the rest of my life. So after some soul searching, I committed 100% to becoming a physician. Now, when I went to medical school, though, I really, again, had no idea of where, what kind of specialty I would want to be in. And honestly, at that time, I really didn't have a lot of insight into what the day-to-day -day of different kinds of doctors and physician specialties um, was like. And so I, throughout medical school, did a lot of searching. I will also say anesthesiology didn't come just from medical school. Uh, the summer before starting medical school, I binged on Dr. Michelle Au's blog, the underwear drawer, drawer.blogspot.com. And she actually was a pediatrics resident that switched into anesthesiology. And so she talks about that transition. She talks about, actually, she talks about medical school. Um, and that's why I started reading it was because I was about to be a medical student and I wanted some insight into that. And then she goes into her process of um, going as a peds resident, switching from pediatric residency into an anesthesia residency, and some of the reasons why she did that. And that made me want to explore the field of anesthesiology without necessarily committing to it. So when I started medical school, that information that I was reading about, the information that Dr. Ao provided in her blog guided me towards joining the anesthesia interest group and shadowing an anesthesiologist in, I believe it was the winter of my first year of medical school during winter break, I shadowed a pediatric anesthesiologist and I still remember how fascinated I was about this anesthesiologist job and how incredible it was that we could anesthetize patients for surgery and wake them back up and take care of them throughout that whole period. I also was really fascinated by the operating room because it was an environment that I had never had exposure to until I got to medical school. Minus, plus minus, um, I did my senior design project in uh, with an interventional cardiologist and I explored that type of procedural room, which in a way is kind of like an operating room, but it's not the same as an operating room where we do bigger surgeries. And so I felt like that could be a good fit for me, but honestly, I also went th through and shadowed a bunch of other specialties. I did a summer internship with cardiology and through that I was able to see my first cardiac surgery. And for a while I thought cardiology would be a really good fit because as an engineer, I worked on the heart lung machine and I I thought that was so cool that we could stop the heart and replace it with a machine. And so I thought maybe cardiology, you know, the pump is, or the pump, the heart, which is like a pump, uh, is such a fascinating organ and such an important organ. And so I explored that. Uh, I followed a, a geneticist as well. And I thought, oh, this could be really cool. So long story short, through medical school, I loved everything everything. I Everything I saw, I loved. But as I continued on in my first and second year of medical school, I got really involved in the American Medical Women's Association. And this was actually spurred by my um, 
by my involvement in the Society of Women Engineers when I was an undergrad. I felt like I there, you know, there's still a lot of gender discrepancies. There is a discrepancy in there's like a gender pay gap still. There are still limited number of women physicians in leadership positions. And so I felt like this was an organization that was important to me and I was able to build it up in my new medical school. And through that organization, I also wondered in the back of my mind if actually ob would be a really good fit for me because the idea of caring for patients uh, longitudinally, um, caring for women and managing women's health, that was important to me, uh, and then being able to both be a uh, outpatient clinician, so seeing someone in clinic, you know, when you go for your annual pap or exam, pelvic exams, like that was something I was like, oh, you know, you can see someone longitudinally in the clinic and also be able to do procedural things like be able to deliver babies, do C-sections, um, be able to do gynecologic procedures and gynecologic surgeries. And I thought, wow, like, isn't that the coolest thing ever that you can have the best of all the worlds. And so when I actually started my clinical clerkships as a third year, I really thought that ob would be a good fit for me. And as a result, I scheduled my clerkships in an order that allowed for ob to come kind of in the middle of the year, which is generally what we recommend if you're really interested in something so that you can get exposure and comfortable with the hospital environment before you get to the one specialty that you absolutely um, want to excel and succeed in. And I actually, if you're a medical student, have a whole blog entry about how my clerkship order was done and thoughts there. And so check that out if you're interested. But that aside, I put ob in the middle of the year and I ended up going through surgery first and I, for a, gl- for a glimmer of a moment, wondered if I should be a surgeon. In reality, it actually wasn't a realistic uh, rotation in surgery because half the surgeons were on vacation and I was on a specialty, uh, a subspecialty service that didn't have a lot of volume at the time. So as a result, my schedule was actually humane. Um, I never did 24 hour calls when I was on surgery. And now I realize that obviously it wouldn't have been a good fit. Uh, I did uh, a peds rotation and for a little while I wondered if I should also do peds or maybe I wanted to do a peds specialty. Uh, I did family medicine and I actually really loved uh, my preceptors on family medicine. I really loved that there was a nice kind of schedule type thing in the clinic. Uh, and then I did ob and it just wasn't a good fit for me. It wasn't a good fit for my personality. It was not actually, you know, the day-to-day was not actually what I saw myself doing five, 10, 20 years down the line. And it was kind of disappointing because I was like, is this going to be it? Like, are these my people? And it just wasn't a good fit. So I ended up doing my an anesthesia elective in the spring of my third year, and I loved it. I felt like hey, these are my people, this is an environment I could see myself thriving in, this is a, you know, realistically looking at the attending schedules and what was going on, these, this was what I could see myself doing longer term. That kind of confirmed for me that anesthesia was a good fit. Uh, when people are looking for the right specialty, a lot of the time med students are looking for their people. I mean, there's this big divide between medicine and surgery. And I think anesthesia is interesting because it kind of falls in the middle. We oftentimes you hear this saying that we are the internists of the operating room because we care about a patient's medical history, care about their optimization, their cardiac status, all of these things in order for them to survive surgery for us to also understand what else we're looking for uh, and what else we can anticipate potentially happening in surgery. And so it's an interesting field because of that. Um, And I will say, you know, I started internship and I actually asked myself because I did a medicine based internship and I started to wonder if anesthesia was the right field for me during that because I realized that it just depends on what environment you're in and the people you're exposed to. And honestly, you know, if I had if I had done medicine in the right place, I probably would have loved internal medicine too. But 
the way things worked out, I was exposed to anesthesiology, had some really great mentors, and was able to make it into the career that I see myself doing long term. When I was an intern, there was a time that I wondered if I had pick the right specialty. Uh, during my year as an intern in medicine, I found that I really loved the team dynamic, that we worked in teams, so I always had the senior with me, I had another colleague who was also an intern, I could bounce ideas off of these individuals, I had an attending around, it, it, was, it felt very team-based, and you know, I worked with the nurses, I worked with the pharmacists when I was ordering things like a um, that an intern may order uh, and it felt like a really good fit at that point and where I did internship patients are really sick and that was something that was really gratifying was being able to help these really sick patients get better and be able to serve the underserved and that was another really gratifying thing about where I did internship and it made me wonder you know am I one, I have to leave my home to move to Boston to do a field that I hadn't been in for over a year and year and, and some change. So the last anesthesia rotation I was on was in March of 2015. And I started my anesthesiology rotation in um, July of 2016. So it had been a little over a year since I had been in an operating room and had been a little over a year since I had any kind of really interaction with another anesthesiologist. And so this actually, internship actually influenced my interest in critical care anesthesiology. And when I got to my residency here in Boston, first and foremost, I realized when I got started that this was the right fit for me. Uh, but I also felt like a piece was missing. And that piece was the almost generic, like, doctoring part of medicine, which is being able to, and this aside, I don't, I don't love rounding per se, rounding being that if you've ever been a patient in a hospital, it's when everyone congregates together. So the team is there, usually outside in the hallway or in the room. And we talk about a patient's um, current medical problems, what um, data we have, and how we're going to uh, treat the patient for the day or the plan. And I didn't love that part of medicine or internal medicine, but I did miss the team dynamic. Uh, there is a different kind of team dynamic in the operating room, but it's not the same type of thing as when you're caring for patients on a floor or in an ICU. And so because I missed this team dynamic, I very quickly realized in anesthesiology that when I was in the operating room, I craved that type of stimulation. I craved being able to care for a couple of different patients, be able to watch them over a longer period of time rather than just the few hours in this in a surgery. And that was what inspired me to do critical care with my anesthesiology uh, practice. So long story short, I found anesthesiology and while the things that I loved about the field as a medical student are not necessarily all the same things that I love about the field now, uh, I will say that it is a really rewarding specialty to be able to care for a patient during a very stressful time, during an anxiety provoking time, and be able to also be in a lot of ways a jack of all trades in the OR being very useful in that you know in the operating room as an anesthesiologist I am my own nurse I am my own respiratory therapist I am my own uh, pharmacist and I am my I am a physician as well so I can utilize all of those things in order to care for patients and so that is really rewarding and it's actually really useful on an airplane emergency too. 
And so for that, I really love this specialty and I really love that I have the opportunity to also train in critical care because what's better in critical care than someone who uses a ventilator every day, who understands pressors or medications to bring up blood pressure, uh, who understands and can do procedures really well. And so those are all things that I think make us really great intensivists as well. So here we are. I hope this was a helpful explanation as to how I got to the field of anesthesiology. Please let me know if you have more specific questions about my practice, about other things that I love about anesthesiology and this specialty, uh, and any other videos you might want to see in the future. I really appreciate you watching this video. Take a moment to like the video if this is content you like, and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in these types of videos in the future. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.